Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This year is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know. It's me, hello, podcast land. Hello, guys. I just want to say one quick thing because it is tomorrow. And it's very important that I say this to people. And I say this to one of my uh, security guards at my work today because he was an ex-cop. But I want to thank all the men and women in service and in the military and in police force that dedicate their time. I want to thank, I want to thank them for their service because it takes a lot to do what you want to do. And I want to shout out to my my buddy Justin Ray and my friend Tom Ray too. I want to make a shout out to my buddy Justin Ray and say thank you for your service. So there you go, guys. Hey, I hope you guys have a phenomenal Memorial Day tomorrow. Not Memorial Day, but uh, 4th of July. Yes, I hope you have a phenomenal 4th of July tomorrow. Eat lots of barbecue food for me. At my work today, my barbecued ribs, barbecued chicken, Mac and cheese and uh, corn muffins. It was delicious. I'm telling you, they know how to cook. So, hey, how are we doing today? What is up in your lives? I am so glad you're here, but happy 4th to you guys. And I wanted to do a show tomorrow on the 4th, but I decided not to. Because then I wouldn't be able to go out and see fireworks. And I want to see some fireworks tomorrow. So, hey, we're here. We're live, and we love you. See, here's one thing that you got to remember. God loves you, and we love you. And there's something you can do about it. You can praise Him for it. So, there you go. So, we love you, and God loves you. And there is something you can do about it. You can praise Him for it. So, hey, praise the Lord that God still and will always and never stop loving us. Now, this message I got today, I got from a song. I was listening to a song by John Starnes, which I do Definitely got to put in the description. So as soon as the first song is being played, I'll put John Starn's song in the description that he sang. It's not his song. It is a song that he did sing, but it's not his song. So without further ado, let's get into a few but brief announcements. Take it away, hon. Thank you, Mr. TGIF. And here's for our announcements. On Monday nights, we have Mr. TGIF with the message. On Wednesdays, we have Outside the Classroom Wednesdays with Dr. Scott Mullen. On Thursdays, we have Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays with Pastor Lance and Ernissa Travis. Saturdays are Worship Saturdays with Mr. TGIF and a few gospel artists. Keep your ears peeled. We are looking and working on more words and worship for you, our beloved listeners. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. TGIF, and enjoy our next episode. Thank you, hon. That was absolutely beautiful. So, with that being said, one thing I would like to make a comment about is, how can you keep your ears peeled? That must hurt. (laughs) With that being said, let's get into our first, our main song of the show, and it is entitled Breathe by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry O'Rell. And I'll put the, the link in for YouTube, but enjoy Breathe. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. (laughs) 
This is the air I breathe. You are my destiny. I'm so lost without you. This is the There you go, guys. That was Breathe by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orell. Let me get this link copied. I got that. I'm going to my... There's a couple places I'm going to post a quick link to. And here's one of them. Posted that. And we're going to post one more to... Right there. There we go. And one more for one of my good friends. There's the show link. There we go. Oops, I got to post the show links now. 
There we go. Okay, we're going to get into this word today because this is going to be a, a beautiful, beautiful word. I'm telling you what, it's, this word is absolutely magnificent. Yes, this word is magnificent. I'm telling you. I got this word. Here, let me let me do this real quick. Let me send ahead a look. There we go. And we're done. Okay. This is actually going to be a magnificent word. I got this word, believe it or not, I got this word from a song. And yes, the song is in there. It's a song that I got from a, well, it's a message I got from a song. And the song, I know the song by heart. I've, I've listened to the song so many times. It's one of my favorite songs. A couple of people actually do the song. One is Legacy 5, which is a great group that does it. But I feel that John Stearns does the song even better. Don't ask me why, but I feel John Starnes' version is this song is better. So we're going to get right into this message. And for today, our message is entitled, Holy is Thy Name. And yes, the song is entitled, Holy is Thy Name. And so is my message, Holy is Thy Name. So we got a bunch of scriptures to go through. We've got, let me see how many we got. We got one. We've got two. We've got, I need to put lines underneath them because there's so many. Two. <clears throat> One. Excuse me. One. Two. Three, three of them, three of them, four, five, five, yeah, this is a pretty long message, five, do, 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 do. six, I was I was right. Just about right. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Six. Yeah, we're good. There actually is only six scriptures. I thought there'd be at least seven. But there's six scriptures. So we're gonna get into our word today, which is entitled Holy is thy name. Let's begin, shall we? <clears throat> Got my trusty homecoming Bible, my New King James Version. So, in this message, we will look at the name of Jesus and the power that is associated with that name. Let me rewrite it instead of the name, because it's not just the name, it's that name. So in this message, let me put my, the word name a little bit further down. Rewrite as I go. Why not? <clears throat> in this message, we will we will look at the name of Jesus and the power that is associated with that name. So let's look at a few scriptures. Number one. Is found in Matthew 1 21. So we're going to go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And yes, my Bible is not upside down. I thought it was for a minute there. Matthew chapter 1, starting at verse 21. So we got to go to Matthew 1. 
My Bible has got some use in it. You can tell the pages are wrinkly a little bit. Matthew. Matthew, you gotta go to chapter one. Matthew one, starting at verse twenty one. And she shall bring forth a son. Let me read a little more to it than that. I'll read right at ver I'll start reading at verse. I'll read, okay, we're going to actually read from verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, Mary's husband, Joseph, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But, verse 20, but while he thought about those things. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, appeared to Joseph, in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Verse 21. And she will bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So, <clears throat> the name of Jesus, first, the name of Jesus, is, first, the name of Jesus is so powerful that the angel said that you shall call him Jesus. I have to put the word she because I made that a bad mistake. It's not you, it's she. Because it's speaking about her, Mary, to Joseph. So, the first, the name of Jesus is so powerful that the angel said that she shall call him Jesus and he shall save his people. Not just save them, but save them from their sins. What does the Bible say in Acts 4.12? 4, Let's go to Acts 4.12. We got a lot of scriptures to cover today, guys. We're going to do this. This is going to be a fun time. And my buddy Duke here is just relaxing and laying down. He's tired. Acts 4.12. Hi, buddy. The people say hi, buddies. The book of Acts. There's Acts. Acts 4. Let's take a verse 12. Now is there, nor is there salvation in any other for among men by which we must be saved. In the King James Version, it says there is no other name. How's it go again? So where are we at? 12, 12, 12. This is Acts 4, verse 12. We'll go to verse 11. This is the... This is the stone which was rejected by you builders. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So, again, it says that there is no other name among men in heaven no, how does it say that again? I'm, I'm losing it today. Nor is there salvation in any other, 
For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There's no other God. There's no other Allah, Buddha, Muhammad, Hare Krishna. You, the Bible talks about one of the, the uh, disciples, I think it was prophets, that, was, that said, okay, I'll tell you what. You build an altar. You put a sacrifice on there. And you call to your God. And what happened? Nothing. He cut, he called, he screamed, he howled, he woo, woo, woo. He did everything he can. But did Baal show up? Absolutely not. So what he, what happened? This this prophet of God built the altar, laid a sacrifice on the altar. He then dug a trench around the altar, filled the trench with water. Not only did God consume this fact sacrifice and burned the altar, but he also took a drink at the same time. <laughs> he must have been thirsty. But see, that just goes to show the power of God that no other God, when he called to his God, his God did absolutely nothing. His God did not even show up. I bet, I bet at that exact moment he felt real bad and real ashamed about his God not even showing up. I was going through his mind like, man, what are you doing over here, Allah or Baal or whatever, Balaam? What are you doing? You're not showing up because he ain't going to show up. See, there is no other name under heaven on which men must be saved. You can't say, well, Buddha, Muhammad, Hare Krishna, Allah. No, there is no other name but Jesus. That's how powerful the name is, is that this, the angel said to Joseph in his dream, he says, she will bring forth a son. You'll call him Jesus. In some of the actual text, it says Emmanuel, which is God with us. You'll call his name Jesus, and he will what? Save his people from their sins. He didn't just say he's going to save their people. He, he's not the type of person that says, okay, here you go. I saved you. Ah, uh, you know, he's not just going to, you know, take away all, everything and just, you know what I mean? Let me let me try to phrase this a little differently. <clears throat> when he says he's going to save his people from sin, he's not just going to say, "Okay, you're done. You're good. Bye." No. He just doesn't save them, give them fire insurance. He saves them from the junk that they're going through. And I like this because <clears throat> Jimmy Swagger said it this way at one point in one of his uh, ministry things I was listening to today, an older one from the like 80s or 90s or something. And he says, when you become saved, all the junk comes off of you. When you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, all that garbage comes off of you. So see, he just doesn't save you from yourself. Or say, here you go. You can go to heaven now. It's your gift. It's free. Thank you. No. You got to be saved from your sins. So his name is so powerful that he can forgive men of their sins. Let me ask you this. He was talking to one of the uh, the Pharisees back in one of the scriptures. And, he, and it says, and it says, what is easier to say? You're forgiven of your sins or you are healed. Take up thy bed and walk. Okay. And there are several times when he said things like that and his disciples not his disciples, but the Pharisees says, and who gives you the power? Who gives you the power to forgive sin? What was his response? God. They thought he was blasphemous because he claimed to be God on foot. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So his name is so powerful that, that if you've seen him, you've seen the Father. And the Pharisees thought that since he said we've got on foot, he was blasphemous. And they said, who gives you the power to forgive sin? But you know what? That's how powerful his name is. The angel said to Mary and Joseph, behold, you'll birth a son. You'll call him Jesus. Emmanuel, God is with us. And he will save them from their sins. Our second scripture we find is in 
you flip the page. Is found in. Wait. <clears throat> so, to keep reading my my text, Acts four twelve, it says that we can only be saved by no one but the holy and matchless name of Jesus. Our next is Philippians 4.13, and everyone knows Philippians 4.13, one of the greatest of all time scriptures. I like Philippians 4.13. It, it's encouraging. I know it's redundant scripture, and a lot of people go with this scripture all the time. Philippians, there we go. Chapter 4, starting at verse... Verse 4, 13. I or we can do all things through Christ, Christ who strengthens me or strengthens us. So, Philippians 4, 13. My comments reads as follows. Not only will he, will we be saved at the the name of Jesus, but what ev whatever storms we go through, I underlined the go word go through, whatever storms you go through, he will bring us through. Remember that. He'll bring us through. The Bible says we can do all things. So no matter what you go through, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But, but, I got another scripture to add to this. But, Whatever storms you go through, he will bring us through. The Bible says, whatever we go through, in Deuteronomy 31.6, let's go to Deuteronomy 31.6. So whatever we do, we're going to Deuteronomy. That's way, 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 way down in the Bible. That was, that's a, a me personal joke. Judges, Kings. I can't find the Deuteronomy in here. One of the easiest place things to find is Deuteronomy. And I don't find it. I think it's... Leviticus... Numbers, I think it's right after Numbers. Deuteronomy, there we go. Deuteronomy, so, 31.6, Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 6. Deuteronomy 31, and here's what I'm going to say again. So, the Bible says, so, so back to my comments, not only will we be saved at the name of Jesus, but whatever storms we go through, we he will bring us through. The Bible says whatever we go through in Deuteronomy 31, 6, let's do Deuteronomy 31, starting at chapter Chapter uh, 31, verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So, whatever we go through, whatever we go through, again, Whatever we go through in Deuteronomy 31 6, he will never leave or forsake us. No matter what we go through, the name of Jesus is that powerful. You gotta remember when Jesus was on the boat with the disciples, okay? On the boat with the disciples, what's the first thing he did when the disciples came to him and said, Look, don't you care that we perish? He says, Ye have little faith. He gets up there, he says, He says, Peace, be still. And the storm stopped. 
Now think about that for a minute. Jesus himself said to the storm, peace be still. So it's at his name. It, his name is that powerful that it even calms storms. It says that, that um, Philippians 4.13, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So no matter what we go through in our lives, Jesus will be with us. He'll never leave nor forsake us. That's how powerful the name of Jesus is so far. The name is so powerful that <clears throat> every wait, okay, that's a that's a, a wrong scripture. I'm not reading it. So he will never leave or forsake us. And the third scripture, well, <clears throat> not third, but third in extras, is Philippians. 2, 10 through 11. So let's go back to Philippians. You should save a page there. Philippians 2, 10 through 11. I like Bible pages because you can hear them flipping and fluttering. Just listen to this. Philippians. Philippi. Philippians. We went way, way, way too far. Nope. That's Corinthians. Ephesians. Philippians. Chapter 4. No, chapter 2. Verses 10 through 11. So, Philippians 2. Philippians 2, starting at verse, where are we at here? <clears throat> That's, there's 2, starting at verse, I'm at 12, starting at verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, shall bow of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth. And verse 11, and that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And the old King James says that Jesus Christ is truly Lord. So the name of Jesus is so powerful. Let me read this to you. Not only... Yeah, it's 4.13. Philippians 2, 10 through 11. Finally, the name of Jesus is so powerful that every niche in heaven on and under the earth shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is truly Lord. What does the Bible say in Luke 10.17? Let's go to Luke 10.17. Luke, chapter 10, seven, verse, verse 17. Then the seven returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Think about that. It states that even the demons, at the name of Jesus, tremble and are subject to to the name of Jesus. What does it say in Luke 10, 17? Demons submit to the disciples because of the name of Jesus. Jesus was given a name that is above all names, that is not to be played, to be messed slash played with. The name of Jesus is so powerful, we are commanded to respect him. We are commanded by God to honor, love, worship, and respect the name of Jesus. Think about that. It's not something that's a suggestion. He doesn't suggest that we honor it. He commands us to honor, worship, 
and praise the name of Jesus. It is a commandment. And see, it's 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 cool because the name of Jesus is so powerful that he came to save his people, number one. The name of Jesus is so powerful that he will bring us through everything at the name of Jesus. All you got to do is when you're going through a storm, say, Jesus, and it's over. And not only that, the name of Jesus is so powerful that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is truly Lord to the glory of the Father. And not only that, demons, they they are subject to, they submit to the name. The disciples said, look, this is awesome. All we got to do is say in the name of Jesus and they submit to you. And there's another scripture where uh, one of the, uh, one of the people were praying and casting out demons and, they, and the demons go, look, I know Jesus who you speak of and I know Paul of who you speak of, but who are you? So see, demons know who Jesus is. Satan knows who Jesus is. Satan knows the truth. And he doesn't want you to fall for it. He wants you to fall for his lies. He knows who Jesus is and what Jesus' plan for being on the earth was and what Jesus' plan is now. And he doesn't want that happening. Jesus knows, uh, Satan knows all this. But see, the demons are even subject to his name because his name is that powerful. There's another song I should put in there, but I'm not going to. But it's called Something About That Name. It goes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Something about that name. Master, Savior, something about that name. Kings and kingdom shall all pass away. But there is something, something about that name. And she goes on in her in her song where Gloria goes on to speak for a minute. She goes, I've seen sin... Um, I see sin-hearted men melted, derelicts transformed, the heart, the lights put back in the eyes of a hopeless child. I see bitterness and hatred subside and turn to love. I whispered, uh, whispered the name at a dying saint over their last fleeting ounce of breath. I can't remember everything, but those are all things that happened in her life when her child got sick and was delirious with fever, and how she watched at the name of Jesus, that fever brow cool. So see, all that happened, but you know what? It was at the name of Jesus. All disease, all sickness, everything has to bow, everything has to technically bow to the name of Jesus or be subject to the name of Jesus, because why? Jesus is our Father, our Healer, our everything. He is, the Gaither saying about, he is our all and all. Another good song I should put in here, but I'm not going to. You got the John Starnes, Holy Is Thy Name song there. Great song, but it's not to be played with. It's not something you say, okay, I know his name's that holy, but I'm going to go over here and I'm going to blatantly do this. Or I know God's name is that holy that God will avenge me, but I'm going to curse so-and-so out. Because they got me mad. See, it's not to be messed or played with. The name of Jesus is so holy. It says that Jesus has the right. Jesus has the right to snuff out your life. He has to be, and people always use this, well, it's, going, it's committing suicide, a sin, and we go to hell for it. It says in the Bible, Jesus has the right to giveth and the right to taketh life. Now, we're not going into suicide, whatever. No, we're not going to. But see, Jesus has the power to give and take life away. If Jesus has the power to take life away, then that name is that powerful. That name is something that you don't want to mess with. Because if you think about it, too, back in the day when the scriptures were in the Old Testament, when you lied to God or he lied to one of the prophets of God, what happens? You instantly died. The Bible says that when the uh, when the man and woman were supposed to give up their property, all of their uh, money from their property that they did, that they sold, they uh, snuck some of it back for themselves and gave the rest to God. Well, 
the, the prophet said, not only did you lie to me, but you lied to God because you kept them back for yourself. And they instantly, that quick, took up the ghost. They died. Why? Because they lied. Now, now, God gives us in this day and age grace and mercy. So we're not going to instantly take up with the ghost. But that goes to show how powerful the name of Jesus is, that people would die instantly at that name. And it's just crazy to see how, see how powerful the name of Jesus is because it is that powerful. All you need to do when you're going through anything, let's just say you're battling something. Say you're battling drugs and alcohol, right? And you are battling it so bad that you tried everything. Go to that, that sin you're dealing with and say, look, you say, Jesus, and it's done with. Jesus, and it's over. It says what? At the name of Jesus. Not at the poof, ta-da, here I am. He don't have to peer up jack nothing. You don't have to appear nowhere physically. All you have to do is just call on his name. It says when you call on his name, you'll be what? Saved. It says, it says to Joseph in his dream, the angel said, you shall call his name Jesus. And he will what? Save his people from sin. So that's how powerful that name is, is that it is a name that you can call on on every single basis and he will be there for you. He will be there for you. When you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is truly Lord, you're saved. His name is powerful. Everywhere you look at in Scripture, it gives you how powerful Jesus' name is. Demons submit to us, he, they said. The, the disciples said to Jesus, Look, even the demons submit to us in your name. When I went through deliverance and I was ministering into the deliverance, I went through it myself too. But I was ministering in the deliverance and I would look at these people being demon possessed and I'll say, Demon, and head turn, I'll say, You look at me. You look at me now. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior, I command you to leave. And that lady or that man was shrieking. Rah! But you know what? That name is powerful. That demon had to leave. Why? Because it's the name of Jesus. It's the name above all names. It's the name above every single name on the face of this earth. There is nothing under heaven which by man we must be saved. Not Buddha, not Muhammad, not Hare Krishna, none of them. Zero, but only by the name of Jesus. I love that. That was a great message. I hope you guys thoroughly enjoyed that and listen to it again. Get the scriptures down, listen to it again, and enjoy hearing what it had to say again because you know what it's the name of jesus and it's that powerful that we have that authority in his name so let's get into our next song our next song is i do declare by none other than pastor evangelist dudley smith enjoy i do declare Set 
There you go, go, guys. That was I Do Declare by my guest on the show, Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. We have three songs to play. We're going to pray them, and then we're going to end the show with that last song. We'll play two. We're going to pray, the, we're going to pray then we're going to play with the last song. Our next song is It's Time by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy. It's time. and praise we sing
give him our praise. Oh, we owe to give him our praise. Oh, we owe to give him our praise. Oh, we owe to give him our praise. Our God, he is awesome. We'll give him praise. We'll give him Passion will give him praise. Our God, he is awesome. We'll give him praise. We'll give him praise with love and passion. There you go, guys. That was It's Time by none other than the K. Dennis Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Let's get into our next song. Our next song on the list is We're Going Up to the High Places by none other than Dr. Tom Ray from his CD, Evangel Live. Now we'll pray. And you're going up to the high places. We've been deceived by the devil too long. Tonight we're going to take. The devil's kingdom down. What he said was his has been ours all along. Tonight, tonight, tonight we're gonna tear the devil's kingdom down. Yeah, yeah. Let's go up. There you go, guys. That was we're going up to the high places. Let's pray. Lord, we come, come before you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that we get to associate ourselves with a name 
that is above all names, a name that is so powerful that demons submit to it, that every knee shall bow and tongue confess to Jesus Christ as Lord. And not only that, Lord, a name that came to earth to save us from our sins and to bring us through everything that we go through. I think, Lord, that you are blessing everyone the sound of my voice, giving them, excuse me, Give them their heart's desire as long as not be what's selfish. And Lord, I ask you to heal them from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet from cancer, diabetes, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis. Heal my sister-in-law's heart and my sister's heart and her diabetes that they're not bad no more. And heal people, Lord, from diseases that contract themselves through sin. Yes, HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes. Why? Because when you heal them, it shows your mercy, your power, and your grace. I'm reminded of a scripture that says you came through the door. It doesn't say you opened the door, so you passed right straight through the door because you're all spirit at that moment. He said, Thomas, look at my hands. Thrust your finger on my side and see that I'm God. What did Thomas do? He got on his knees and said, truly, you are the Son of God. What did you say? Blessed are those who have seen and believed. But it doesn't stop there. It says, blessed are those who have not seen yet still believe. So show them now, Lord, so when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have to say, I have to see it to believe. Because you, they'll say, if you did it then, you'll do it again. Because your word says you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you. We praise you. And we honor you. It's all in the name that is above all names. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen, ba -doom, boom, boom. Amen, doom, doom, doom. Amen, amen, amen. Our last song on the list is His Word by none other than my guest on the sh guest in front of the show, The Light Warrior. Enjoy His Word. was in the beginning, the life, the truth, the hope. The worlds came into being by the power words he spoke. He sang life's song over the water and the dust, bringing forth man, beast, and bird. And he holds it all together now by the power of his word. His word is spirit. His word is life. His word is love. His word redemption.
brings the power from above. His word is everlasting love. His word brings the power from above. His word is everlasting love. His word brings the power from above. His word is everlasting. There you go, guys. That was his word by none other than the K. Dennis Spirit. No, that was the Light Warrior, his word. Hey, that does conclude our show for today. As always, two things to remind you. The the older version is still up on the Play Store, so you can download the app still. And ask your Alexa device, say Alexa, open Podcast Portal. It's just say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal where you can listen to this very show. Straight from your Alexa devices, you also got that skill. Excuse me for your video Alexa devices as well. Again, say Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our show for today. As always, this is TGIF reminding you to, one, trust in the Lord in all your ways. Two, lean not to your own understandings. And three, in all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. Thank you and good night. <laughs>